And with that, welcome in to the KSO Show. Mason Voth, Drew Galloway from K-State Online here with you. KSU underscore fan. He uh, decided to uh, take the night off uh, for a good reason. He is uh, he's spending uh, more Thanksgiving time with family. Um, so, you, you know, he's it's not the fact that he didn't want to spew just some disgusting numbers your way about the performance that K-State's defense put up on a Saturday night against Iowa State because he very easily could have done that. And if he was here, I'm sure he would, not in a malicious way, just in a matter of fact, like it was pretty terrible what went down on Saturday night type of way. There's no way to sugarcoat it. There is there is nothing good that you can say about what K-State's defense said last night. And uh, last night's game is just... I don't know. There, there are a lot of different things to to dive into and in ways that this thing can go, and it's it's tough to pick the right ones because there was just so much bad in that game. And there was that, a lot of bad. I mean, I I tried to think of you know I think at various points this year I've gone and thought like man, is that you know not not counting the 2020 season? I I. I if anybody that has known or listened to me over the last however many years, I, I don't count the 2020 season for anything, uh, good or bad for anybody. I mean, we, I, I can list off many, many, many things that happened in 2020 that have never come close to happening again and being replicated. One of which is a guy that just got fired in Tom Allen in Indiana. Uh, yeah. He never was able to recapture his 2020 success. I was on radio down here in Wichita. I watched Isaac Brown as an interim head coach win a conference title in the American with Houston and Memphis and whoever else you want to throw in there that might have been okay because it's a shitty conference. But he won a conference title. You know what he never did again? Go to the NCAA tournament and didn't even sniff the top half of their league. So, like, 2020, so many things don't make sense from that. Chris Kleiman going four and six. That's not who Chris Kleiman is. And I know that some of you out there are mad at him or mad at his coaches right now, and you you want to say, well, no, he is a bum. Uh, no, not the case. Eight and four is the floor. Yeah, yeah. He's he's won eight seasons every year he's been here, ex- eight games every season he's been here except for 2020. Uh, but last night was really bad, and, and thinking about it, that might be the most embarrassing loss of Chris Kleiman's career. And in a lot of ways – it it trumps what took place in Stillwater this season, where in the game in Stillwater, you walk out after that thing and you think, there, yeah, there's nothing good that happened here. But you know what? There is at least both sides of the ball showed flashes and fight at times. On Saturday, it was a one-man show. It was all on the offense. They, they could not do enough to overcome a horrendous performance from their defense. And – Anybody that that wants to try and push back about anything that is negatively said about this defense in the aftermath of that game, you're just flat wrong. And if you can't handle that kind of criticism, you're soft and you should probably check how you take in sports because we're people, myself and Drew included, and others outside of the K-State online bubble will say some very negative things over the next week about the the K-State defensive performance and it is all warranted and it's not us being mean to the individual people and none of that because I know that there are those people out there that will be like well that's not very nice my mom would probably be one of those she'd be like well that's not very nice I'm like you know look uh it was terrible it was awful putrid ugly disgusting find me a dictionary and I'll just rattle off any bad adjective that is in there because that's what the K-State defense was and then some and it was a pathetic and embarrassing performance. And it look, I, it's not just the defense that was pathetic and embarrassing to me last night. And, and I'll dive into that a little bit later uh, when we get into it. But uh, I'll, I'll hand it off to Drew here to rattle off some thoughts from K-State's just terrible performance. Yeah, I mean, you brought up that you don't think it's as uh, like embarrassing as the Oklahoma State one. And... I, no, I think I, it is. I think it's more embarrassing than the Oklahoma oh, State one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I look. Yeah. I, the Oklahoma State one felt really bad in the time, but it, it, one were, team is actually too. good. Yeah. One team is actually good, and the other team isn't very good. And I'll let you figure out which one is not very good. It's the, the team that K State played Saturday. 
They like, just that just lost two of their running backs before the game. They were like, "Yeah, we're actually not coming on the trip. We're out of here. See ya." Yeah, like it. There's no real words to describe it. Like I know that we'll get into the defense and kind of what I talked about before we started recording of what I thought was more of like a lack of effort problem. But I, I said this during post game, and I, I don't know if you were in uh, veneer for it. But the the defensive performance kind of reminded me most of uh, the 2007 Nebraska game uh, when Nebraska scored 73 and just did whatever they wanted. It wasn't to the extreme of like just explosive after explosive for Nebraska in that game. But that was a shit Nebraska team that scored 73 on K-State uh, then and had 702 yards. If you gave Iowa State more plays, like let's say K State didn't have as good of an, an offensive showing as they did uh, last night, how many points do you think Iowa State scores? Oh, I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like, know. I, Iowa State could have put up a ton of points last night if the offense was just average, but the yeah. offense played one of the best games of uh, the entire season, which is what sucks. Like when you think about everything that happened last night. I mean, that, that was a master class for the most, for the most part by the offense. They sustained drives. They held onto the ball. They, they threw the ball well at times in conditions that were awful to throw in. And, and what, what does the defense do? I, I mean, I, I made the joke to you that I told other people, I said, Oh, Abu Sama might've just scored again yeah, because it just felt like that kind of night where, it was from the opening play. It just felt like K-State's defense was in trouble. And it, it was, I think it was the exact same play that Brees Hall scored on in 2021. It felt like it, it, it was very, very similar. Uh, and that's one of those that you just think like, okay, throw back to 2021. What do you think Iowa State is going to do to start this game? Oh, well, they're, they're probably just going to hand it off and see what they can do with their all American running back, or, you know, if he wasn't a great running back that, you know, was a high NFL draft pick and they're going to give it to Brees Hall. They, they, it's going to him. How do you let him run straight up the middle on you for a touchdown for 75 yards? And it's the same type of deal last night in the snow. What is the first thing that a team is going to do? They're going to hand it off and see what they can get. And, Iowa State did that, and it was a pathetic display from the start from K-State, and we should have known from that moment forward that the defense was not up to the challenge and the task of last night. And really, I like I don't know what the challenge of last night was because if you look around, and Chris Kleiman kind of hit on it after the game, yes, there was snow on the ground and lots of it, and it, it was slick and probably hard to get footing out there. But you know what? K-State never had a run like that last night. For, for what they did. I think their longest run of the night was 15 yards. Meanwhile, Iowa State was just ripping them off left and right. I mean, they only ran 35 plays, so you know only half of their plays were like 35-yard-plus gains. But I like the only way that you can sum up what happened last night, it was a, either a lack of focus, a lack of effort, or a lack of preparation. And all three are horribly embarrassing for a team that's in the top 20 that is in game number 12 has guys that played on a Big 12 title team last year and has a team that w should have been thought they would have been in the running for getting back to Arlington, and they didn't. Like There is just so much of last night that you can't find an excuse for to make up for how bad it was. And I think it needs to be hammered repeatedly just how bad it was because like, it, it was... any of the numbers you find, look at, look at it down at the bottom of the screen if you're watching on the YouTube. <laughs> K-State ran 102 plays on offense last night. Iowa State only ran 35, and Iowa State won the game 42-35, and it's not, it's not that bad. Iowa State averaged 14 yards of play, over 14 yards of play before the kneel downs took place in last night's game. K-State had almost 500 yards of offense, 497. Iowa State, 488, pretty similar there, but K-State still outgained them, scored seven less points, and you just can go through the numbers however you want to. K-State, 32 first downs. Iowa State, 10. Third downs, Iowa State, 3 of 7. K-State, 11 of 23. K-State was 3 of 4 on fourth down. Go through all of these different 
numbers or whatever you want to find. Oh, here's the here's the most embarrassing one of losing 42 to 35. Iowa State was zero for zero in the red zone last night. Iowa State, Iowa State never had to run a play in the red zone. That Iowa is State never had to run a play out. within the 30. Yeah, and, and and that all just works out to either not being focused or being soft and not being able to handle some snow and cold weather last night, or just saying, you know what, screw it, whatever. We don't really care about this game because it felt like the defense did not care about that game last night. And uh, that's, that's what it looked like. Is that 35 plays? Is that including the kneel downs? Cause uh, it, it was like. In the, I, I think that's including the kneel down. So you so, take so, it, uh, th- three of them out or two so of them out. So it was a one. No, cause they, they kneeled down before half. So that's, it was actually a hundred two to 32 in plays True. of legitimate go. plays. Well, that that's why like going into halftime when Iowa State kneeled it down. Uh, I remember a DY uh, fan and I kind of were like, "Why not hand it off and just see what happens?" I mean, they they'd been busting runs all night, so it was weird that they decided to kneel it down then. But like you said, all three of like preparation, uh, toughness, all of that. What's worse and like has kind of crossed my mind is like, what if it's like all three? from last night like yeah i i love joe Klanderman. this defense has been rock solid all season they've had their struggles at times they figured it out but like what happened last night well and that's and that's a good point because they had like you said the games where they struggled and they then they did figure it out why were you not able to figure it out last night and and really there wasn't anything to figure out last night other than the fact of hey that just don't let them run right up the middle and get by you so that's why I really do think like we we can try and and go through here and and look Joe Clarman this is his defense. He deserves some heat for this. No no doubt about it. And there are there are moments last night where I was sitting there thinking, "You know what? This, he could at least be putting these guys in better positions to try and make up for it." But you know what? At the end of the day, it's game 12. If your players aren't tackling, aren't showing effort, aren't doing a lot of things the right way, I, Joe Klanderman had to be the most pissed off guy in that stadium last night. I, I have no doubt about that because I, I know Chris Kleiman was upset about it. And I think that's why it was such a kind of an odd thing with his press conference. The, I think he was trying to mask all these emotions of just how upset he was, how embarrassed he was. And the fact that after he got done talking to the media, he had to go out there and spend time with the seniors families after, you know, you all, you just had the senior night festivity stuff and like, you feel like you ruined it because I think that's another element of this that yeah. you know, people people were so wrong and nasty to Will Howard last night. And I know it wasn't a large number, but it was out there and I saw it and I heard it. I heard it in the back of the, the south end zone during the game. And, you know, if, if you're this lady out there, I have no problem that I'm about to call you a piece of trash. But you are a piece of trash for saying that Will Howard sucks throughout that final drive and saying tons of bad things about him and what, and calling for Avery Johnson that moment. Cause let me tell you, Avery Johnson is going to be a great quarterback at Kansas state. I have zero doubt about that. He is special. He is great. He will be the next quarterback at K state for the next three seasons. There are no worries about that. Will Howard. Yes. Bad interception last night. You, you know what it didn't do did not cost K state in the grand scheme of things. And he was in that position because his defense couldn't get a stop to save their life. So he's having to press and throw the ball and dumping snow to five foot ten receivers out there. And so he made one mistake last night. Made one mistake that could have cost them. It didn't. He played his butt off. He throws for almost 300 yards, similar to last week against Kansas. He tried to make winning plays, but he just couldn't do it. Last night's not on Will Howard. And the problem with what happened with the defense last night is that it turns into the quintessential Will Howard game, where what we've seen for most of his career is the K-State's in these games, but then there's this mistake, and then you blame it on him at the end, and it's just like, oh, we can throw it on him. He wasn't good enough. Look, Will Howard had to throw the ball 50 times in the snow last night. That's inexcusable from K-State. And that's why I'm not just putting this game on the defense. They are they are culprit number one. They are the biggest issue with what took place last night. They are not off the hook in any way whatsoever. But and I've and I was nice to them after the KU game. I gave them props for what they did. But I have been very critical of the beef this year. 
if you are this magical, terrific, fantastic offensive line, you know what I thought you would have done in the snow last night? Create some holes that were bigger than one 15-yard run for your running backs and not make your team have to throw the ball 50 times in the snow. I mean, look, K-State did well enough in the snow throwing the ball last night. I was impressed at, at how much success they were able to have throwing the ball, but it's inexcusable that you were in a position that you had to throw the ball that much in the snow last night because there was no room ever for DJ Giddens or Trayshawn Ward to run. So, yes, you can put it to the max. Level 10, this is on the defense last night. But level seven, this is on this is on the offensive line too. That was a pretty embarrassing performance for them, but it's going to get overlooked by the fact that K-State was in it. They did well on offense, and the defense was so bad, and so many people out there just want to be terrible people to Will Howard. Will Howard did a lot of good for K-State. He played great football. He's playing good football this year. Yes, there were some stinky stretches. He figured it out, and as you can tell, he cares a lot about Kansas State. And K-State people, I think for the most part, it's very similar to the end of like the Bruce Weber stuff where it's like, hey, we appreciate what you did, but it's time to move on. Look, I'm the same way. I am very appreciative of, of what Will Howard did for Kansas State, my my alma mater, the, the number one place that I love more than anything in this world. But I can respect him afterwards. And, I, and guess what Will Howard didn't do? He didn't call a press conference and talk crap on K-State afterwards. I still am on bad terms with Bruce Weber for that one. I think he's a dipshit for what he did there. I'm sorry for the language in this one. But I, <laughs> I hold that against Bruce Weber for a long time because you don't get to come in here and try and make excuses and bash my school for your shortcomings. Will Howard didn't do that, though, and he very well could have. Will Howard could have gone out there and said, yeah, it was really tough when you know fans were treating me like crap. He didn't. And a majority of the fans last night had the right attitude towards Will Howard where it's like, this is his last game here. That you know, He did a lot of good, won a Big 12 title, put up with a lot of crap from us, from everybody. I respect him. I'm thankful for what he did for K-State. Obviously a, a great you know person to represent the school. But then there's the select few that want to be nasty towards him. And they just want to dump this on bad defense. But number one, those people really want to blame Will Howard. I, there is so much that makes me upset from last night's game. And it's not just the fact that I watch K-State's terrible defense, but it's the way that some people have acted in the aftermath. And so uh, that's a long rant about a lot of different things. But there are a lot of fingers that need to be pointed after last night's game. You can point him at the defense. You can point him at Joe Klanderman. You can point him at Chris Kleiman. Heck, you can even point him at Colin Klein for some of the things that went down last night. I think the offense not being able to score uh, and having to settle for two field goals are major moments in that game. That yeah. Those missed opportunities on the offense. I think some of that comes down to the play calling. I, I, I didn't love how passive it was by Colin Klein. But – you should not be pointing fingers at Will Howard for what took place last night. And if you are, it's because, again, you have a bias in this situation and you're never going to be fair to him. And I end it by, yet again, saying to the lady that kept saying, Will Howard sucks and a bunch of nasty things to him, you are a horrible person. I have, And I, if you're watching this, I have no problem if you hate me for saying that. But that's the wrong opinion, and it's not even a fair opinion to have. I can disagree with people's opinions, even if they're fair. I did it multiple years working on K-Man with John Kurtz and Mitch Fortner. We had some great things. You know what? I always respected their opinions, though, and their opinions were not as wrong as this one. It's just a nasty thing that, that people handle. So uh, I'll, I'll give the floor back to you, Drew. Uh, so, I mean, to your Will Howard point, I mean, when you run 102 plays, you're going to have some kind of mistakes. And he wasn't great last night, but he did enough that on an average night for K-State's defense, K-State probably rolls. On a and, below average night for K-State's defense, they should probably still roll. And, and I think to your point about the play calling, I think it goes back to what you said about the offensive line uh, in those goal-to-go goal, goal situations, that they just couldn't get the push. And, and because of that, they had to run the speed option to the short side of the field which went nowhere and then they had to settle for a uh, field goal and they didn't get a touchdown on the opening drive. So like, it, it was just, it was a weird game and it still makes no sense to me. Like 102 plays are just so many plays on offense. And the thing that I, I keep going back to, and I said it a couple times in the press box uh, during the fourth quarter 
Because, I mean, the, the play differential was massive the entire game. And, and I, I kept saying to D.Y. and Fan, I said, why is Iowa State's defense the one that's getting stronger as the game is going on? And they're the one that's been on the field 80, 90, now 100 plays. Yeah. But K-State's defense, as the game went on, it felt like they got worse. I guess it was because the Iowa State defense – uh, never like they, they always stayed warm. They were always moving around last night. The K state defense, they were always on the sideline cold and, and getting pampered by the heated benches and the big heavy coats and everything. I don't know. Look, I, I, I don't have any ill will towards Joe Klanderman or anybody on this K state defense. I thought they've been pretty good this year, but there's just, there's no excuse for last night. And, and you have to be like, you have to be, 100% honest in this and and just tell it how it is like last night was bad nobody should feel good about uh you know anything that that went on last night defensively today and I, I think they'll be better in a month when we see them in the bowl game wherever yeah and whoever that's against and I, I don't know that we'll ever see something that bad from a Joe Klanderman defense again and he, he, look Joe Klanderman is is good at his job he, he he's I, very good at his 100% job, believe that like um, just last night, that's why I think as much as, you know, and, and look, I'll, I'll throw this out there. I'll give the, you know, the, the, the raw meat to the wolves out there for everybody that calls for coach grades after, uh, player grades, they are called player grades. You know, okay. they, it's, <laughs> uh, look, the, if you were to grade Joe Klanderman last night, he does not get a good grade. I mean, Joe Klanderman, he, he, he gets a no. an F. N but, no, no, nobody on that defense from last night gets a good grade. Yeah, but like at the end of the day, uh, you can't really. I don't even really know what K State's defensive game plan was last night because every play was basically just by, 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 by. Like guys running by you. I, I, I don't even know how to quantify. It, like it, it looked like K State's defense was stuck in quicksand the entire night. Yeah. It was uh, not very which, good. Which, like, on offense, like, it, it also seemed like they were kind of lacking explosiveness, like, when they were running. Like, I, I know I know DJ Giddens runs really, really hard, and he ran really hard last night, but it just didn't feel like he had the, like, explosiveness that he has had all season. Yeah. It's like, it, it was also weird. Like, I, I mean, I've said this, like, 800 times now. The, the game was wild. Um, I will say uh, there was one time where there was a, some inexcusable action by a defensive player, and that player never returned to the game. Uh, so, I mean, name they, names, they, Drew. Name names. Uh, will Lee's tackle attempt on, I think it was Abu Sama's third touchdown run. Uh, he never returned to the game after that. It was Keenan Garber the rest of the way. Uh, I mean, then the third and 16. This is yeah. where it comes into like where I am like, was this like a, an effort deal? The, the third and 16 thing, I think it's a combo of effort, but I, I do put that on Joe Klanderman because we saw this as a problem earlier in the season for K-State. I mean, at home against UCF was the biggest. UCF had some massive draws and screen passes that turned into first downs and touchdowns in that game. And I think that's where it's an element of the scheme thing and where now – I think it's scheme. I think it's it's Joe Klanderman's call in that situation. I would also say though that this is where this is where it's so tough for those of you out there that are like grade the coaches, grade the coaches, grade the coaches. Look, I can I can grade Chris Kleiman's you know decision on using timeouts or should they have gone for it? Should they not? Like I think Chris Kleiman made a massive mistake by not going for it on the first possession of the second half. I, yeah. I didn't think that made a lot of sense to me, but. This is where for Joe Klanderman, do you know how scrambled his, his brain had to be last night? And Chris Kleiman kind of talked about it afterwards about like, you know, how, how do you decide if you're bringing pressure there, if you're doing all this? And he's like, oh, yeah, well, we, we talked about it all. But how can Joe Klanderman make a decision there when he's like, well, I haven't gotten good tackling or good effort from this tonight. So how do I know that like sending pressure works here or you know, if I play these guys back, are they actually going to be ready to move just a little bit? To Like, he had to be, his mind had to be twisted into a pretzel trying to figure out what was the right call there. 
But I do put a lot of that on him because I think that's been a weak spot for K-State all year. So that's that's kind of a blind area that Joe Klanderman needs to be better, better at. But I will also give him the slightest bit of slack to say this all ties back into the fact that his defense didn't want to be there last night. Or if they did want to be there, uh, they need to, to do a lot better job of trying to act like they want to be there and showing that they want to be there. Yeah, because I think that third and 16, the hardest thing for me to stomach is that you had four K-State defenders there plus the sideline, and nobody even tried to push Jalen Noel, Noel out of bounds. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been at KSO for three seasons now. We've never had a game where no defensive player was named player of the game by our <laughs> uh, in our little feature thing. And I, I said that last night, no, no, no defensive player was worthy of it. Yeah, no, that's it's totally fair. No one, no one was worthy of it last night defensively, because uh, even the ball that was fumbled, um, like I, that, that's just a product of the, you know, the the, I, you know, like the the weather out there. I, I'm not going to give that to anybody uh, doing anything good. So, yeah, it was bad. It was bad for the K State defense all around. Uh, and I, I just don't know how you go through and, and say anything other than that. And that's why, again, like I, mo- I, 80% of the people watching and listening to this, they're not going to have a problem with anything that we've said, mostly me, because I've probably been the most negative and harsh because they're going to get it and they're going to understand. Even like uh, I would even challenge like, you know, we, we hear coaches all the time. They, they block out the outside noise. They don't pay attention to the media and all this stuff. Yet when something negative is said, they get offended by it and they really like, I'm sure this is something that, like, if if it if it got to any of the coaches or the players, they'd probably be upset about it. But my response would be, defend it then. Defend what took place on Saturday. And you can't. And, and that's why, like, I have not been this down or this negative about anything that happened this year for K-State. I no. mean, even, even when the Will Howard stuff was, was a delicate deal and we could, you know, go through and say, like, that was terrible against Oklahoma State, um, it wasn't it wasn't this bad because – you know what Will Howard did in that Oklahoma State game? He still did some good things. You know, he, he still had a chance there. The K-State defense didn't have a chance at all last night, and it was terrible. Uh, so to the 20% yeah. of people that are going to be offended by this because, you know, you don't want any negativity and it's not nice, whatever, uh, tough luck. I, I got nothing for you because you're just going to be out in the dark on this one. And, I mean, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse again. Because I've I've said this a few times too. That's how K State's defense played last night, like a bunch of dead horses because they didn't move. That Iowa State offense is not good. No. It and especially in that weather, that Iowa State Drew, offense. T- tell the people how many rushing yards Iowa State had last weekend. Nine. Mm-hmm. That Iowa State offense was not built for that weather to do to put up 42 points on 32 actual plays. I was here. Here is Iowa State's rushing leaders by game this season 49, 59, 31, 58, 67, 99, 52, 90, 57, 110, 11, 276. The only team that had allowed Iowa State to have a 100 yard rusher this year was BYU. They got beat 45 to 3. K State gave up 276 to Abu Sama. When Iowa State, by the way, had no other running backs that they could really turn to because two of their three top running backs, they said, now nah, we're not going on this trip. Screw that. And uh, are headed towards the transfer portal. So Iowa State had literally one running back that had done anything this season last night, and they ran all over this K-State defense. And, and when you look at all of their stats, Iowa State's offense is so much better at passing. Mm-hmm. In in that weather, you don't expect a good passing team to be able to run the ball at will. And I mean, they they ran the ball at will. Yep. And Iowa State passing the ball last night. They only they only completed eight passes, but they were eight of twelve for two thirty and three touchdowns. Just inexcusable stuff. And it it ruined the night for guys that had a really good night, like Ben Sennett, who hauled in. 10 catches, over 130 yards, a touchdown. I mean, it was it was one of the best games Ben Sennett has played, and he's played some good ones. Well, and- I'll, I'll raise you further. That's the best. That I think that's probably the best game for a K-State tight end a lot of people have ever seen. Yeah, you're probably right. So, 
Uh, it's, the, it's the most catches, and I think the fourth most yards by a tight end in a game at, at K-State, and it just gets completely overshadowed. Man. By the way, did you realize that DJ Giddens is a uh, third in uh, K-State history for yards by a sophomore? Did not realize that. Uh, it's a uh, it's pretty obvious who the top two are, so I mean, it's not it's not very fun. Uh, Darren's rolls and Deuce Vaughn. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's that's those two. Oh, you you don't know? You were just you were just I, assuming. I'm assuming that it's those two. I feel like that's a very safe assumption. Uh, well, uh, let's see how quick uh, my my uh, media guide uh, usage can be. It's, it's it's you know it's always a little tough. Rushing records. Uh, let's see. We're we're in the rushing records. Deuce Vaughn is definitely one of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I, I went too far past now. All right. Well, that is, I almost I almost got there in a in a timely fashion that I thought would have made a lot of sense, but uh, I don't think I I have it. Um, yeah, no, I'm not I'm not going to have it. I'm so. gonna I'm gonna safely assume that's Deuce Vaughn and Darren Sproles. Yeah, I mean I would I would assume so. Uh that's probably a safe bet. Uh yeah. He's yeah, also we'll just, the, we'll just say the, it's those guys. Also third fastest player to get to a thousand yards with by carries. Uh I'll I'll give you uh who do you think the top two are? Because this one is very surprising. Oh uh, what's what's the number? Uh so he had 175 carries was when he got to a thousand. Okay. Uh, so who are the top two? One Wait. is obvious. One Wait, is obvious. I'm... One is not. He had 175 carries when he got to a thousand. Yes, and two players got there faster. But he has so 195 he... carries this year. Well, yeah, but his 175th was when he got to a thousand. That that's when they count it. That's what I'm saying. So it took him 20 carries to get 70 yards. Uh, yes, uh, that highlights just how bad things were uh, yes. last night for uh, for the K State. Uh, okay, so quickest to a thousand yards. One is obvious, one is not. Okay, uh, well, the, I'll throw Darren Sproles out there again. Yes. Okay. Um, hmm. This guy, if uh, he was on the 2007 team that uh, was part of the 73 31 game against Nebraska. James Johnson. That is a great poll. Uh, and then he's he tied it with a quarterback. I won't give you any hints for this one because I want to see if you can get this. Uh, <laughs> uh, Steve Grogan. <laughs> I like it, but no. <laughs> uh, Colin Klein. No, no. OK, I this is a guy I, I don't think I would have said that he had a 1000 yard season before, but it makes sense that he did because he was just never healthy enough. Oh, Jesse Ertz. Yeah, Jesse Ertz 2016 had the same amount of carries that DJ did to get, when he got well, to a thousand. He did. I mean, yeah, he I mean, he was a good runner that season. There's it was his one healthy season. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah God. What could have been if he had been healthy in 2015 and we weren't subjected to? Well, you yeah, know what? I, look, hey, look, I'm not. You know, normally I say bad things about Joe Hubner, and it's not his fault. Uh, it's Bill Snyder's fault for not having better quarterbacks prepared to play in the Big 12 behind your starter. But uh, today shows uh, the only negativity needs to be geared mainly towards the defense of the 2023 team for what they did. At least Joe Hubner, I never thought that he wasn't giving any effort. I I think Joe Hubner played his butt off every time he stepped on the field for K State. That so, TCU game, especially. So what? I was there, boy. I sat there. Thinking, was, is this really oh, going to happen? I was there too. Oh boy, it did, it did not happen. <laughs> uh, no, it did not happen at all. But Joe Hubner, this might be the first time publicly I'm ever giving him credit for something. I'm. Joe Hubner, I would have I would have taken eleven Joe Hubners on defense last night for K State than what they ran out there because it could not have been any worse. And I at least know that I would have had eleven guys that were that cared and were playing hard. And if if you were on the K State defense last night and you you think you played hard and, and you played like you cared, 
I've got a lot of questions about why last night was such a struggle, and I don't know that we're ever going to get the answers to it. But all right, that's that's enough of the negativity. We know how it goes. K State lost forty two thirty five. They finished the season at eight and four. Uh, regular season that is. They're not going to have a chance to get a tenth win in a bowl game, which is pretty disappointing. And honestly, like big picture, I think last night's result really spoils this season. Uh, yeah, for me because I you know. Look, I, there's already a lot of what ifs, and I already had those thoughts uh, with the three losses because they all easily could have been wins and a bunch of these other things. But you know what? At the end of the day, like I was to the stage of th- those were tight games against good teams. Oklahoma State's the only one that I really can't excuse. Um, but the others, like you were on the road, top 10 teams, and it was back and forth at the end. And, you know, it, it, you lost by a field goal in both of them. It was a good season, and it was a, a fun season for the most part. But when I think back on it now, and I look at this eight and four season, I, I'm not going to have the same feeling for it that I, I think I would have had K State won yesterday. Because eight and four with a real stinky loss to Iowa State, like went, what went down, especially when you think about like the opportunity that was there, like. That was the first game with you know snow actually accumulating at home for K State since 2000. Like that would have been an awesome game to go back and watch highlights years from now and be like, man, that game was really fun for anybody that was there. Outside of the fact that it was cold and crappy driving conditions before and after. And I also want the people to know that uh, I I was with you last night. I was a gamer. I was on the field the entire game. So. Uh, I don't want anybody thinking that I'm, you know, going, this game was awesome while I sat in a, you know, 72 degree press box up top. No, I was out there with you. I, I was playing, I was playing in the same conditions that, as that K-State defense last night. Uh, so I like that's, I just think last night puts a lot of stink on this season and it probably shouldn't, but I think it just kind of magnifies all the, the peaks and valleys of the year where you go, man, K-State was playing so well at times. Like, how do you let that happen at home? And then also, it just it, it puts more emphasis on the bad that happened from the offense in the Missouri game and Will Howard specifically in the Oklahoma State game. Like, man, it, it just it, – it's not as enjoyable and as fun. And uh, especially when you think about the way this team got to where they were playing – uh, the talent started to get to the point where we thought they were the second best team in the Big 12. I still, at the end of the day, think they are the second best team in the Big at their 12. Peak, at their peak, they're the second best team. But it's just, it's it's not going to be very fun to think back on and, and everything else that went with it. It's it's just hard because there's a, there is such a different feeling between eight and four and nine and three, especially with a non conference loss that you had because nine and three means that you went yeah. seven and two in the big 12, which yep. I mean that that's only happened. Uh, the back-to-back seven wins in conference hasn't happened since 2011, 2012. So you, you lost that last night. You lost being undefeated at home for the first time since 2012 last night. Like you lost so many different things that could have been like, okay, like, Case they didn't get back to Arlington, but that that was still like a hell of a season. Like, mm-hmm. there's yep. no shame in losing that many close games yeah, you, on you, the road. You feel like K State at the end of the day did about it, everything they could in yeah. in 2023. They they came close to maximizing their 2023 because at the end of the day, this team, while the games were close and they could have gone either way, this team was not good enough to be a 12 and 0 team. Like that's that's not the case. 11 is even a stretch, but. Nine, ten wins, which they could have gotten to, seems like it would have been right in the regular season. And to end at eight, that just feels like you you wildly underperformed. And I guess I mean, was there was their win total set at eight and a half before was, the season? Was, uh, depending on where you got, when you got it, at some places it was seven and a half okay. early, then made it eight and a half. And like we're not discrediting anything that happened that season. Yeah. It is hard to win, and when eight wins is your floor, which is pretty much been it under Chris Kleiman that that is a great floor, but it, it does feel a little empty because it feels like they left something out there. And especially last night, because I, I mean, that's going to be the last time that we see them in a month. 
And for a lot of people, depending on where the bowl game is, that's going to be the last time they see K State in person for another until next September. Yeah. So like it, that part I think makes it hard too. Uh, you you said that you were a gamer and you were in the or you were out there with in all the conditions of the crowd. I I want to give a shout out to the crowd. I mean that yeah. that that was more people there last night than I ever could have imagined with how hard it was snowing and the driving conditions. So shout out to everybody that came because it, it was a fun atmosphere. It was loud at times. It was hard to be loud because the defense wasn't on the field for very long. But it, it was a great crowd, great atmosphere. It was the first time I had seen K State ever play in the snow. I mean, like I, I was two in the at in two thousand. Yeah, we so talked said, about this last night. Well, uh, what we we both were at the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, uh, in in two thousand one. So yeah. yeah. And like we don't remember that. So yeah. Like it, that'll be that's just a fun memory for me. I got a lot of fun pictures on the field during pregame while I was snowing. Like it's something that I'll never forget in that sense. But it's like then you remember like the game, and that, then you just get mad. Yeah. And that and that's just for us two guys that cover the team went to K State. So think about guys like Will Howard and Ben Sennett and Cooper Beebe and Seth Porter and Austin Moore. Guys that that may have just played their last game at Bill Snyder Family Stadium, and that's the lasting legacy. I mean, the the opportunity for it to be a a storybook type of ending where hey, we won we won nine games that year, we did it in the snow on Senior Day, we we're able to win, you know, over Iowa State again. Like, just a lot of a lot of negative feelings to come out of that, and and so I don't know. We'll we'll have plenty of time over the next month and more to to talk about, you know, legacies and, and what everything means and everything. Uh, but I, I do think like, I, if, if you haven't seen it yet, you can go to my Twitter and find it at the real Mason V it's the video that I played just before, but you can see the full version of it, of Will Howard's the last player to walk off the field last night. And I, I think that like, that was the perfect like encapsulation of what last night was where um, every, everybody that was there, should have an appreci appreciation for what you saw in terms of the last game that a lot of those seniors are ever going to play there and what that class did for K-State and everything else. But you're going to feel like you let one get away and it's going to sting for a while. Um, but I, I think like that's that's kind of a lasting image that that will be there and uh, it, it fit what went down last night. So um, I don't know, just kind of a uh, – a, a weird way to end the season because I would not have expected K State to lose that game, especially like that. And there's just not much else that can can be said or defended from it. Yeah, I mean, I, and I never in a million years you tell me it's blizzarding. Well, it wasn't really a blizzard, but it's <laughs> snowing really hard. And that Iowa State's going to score 42 points. Yeah, and that that's going to be how K State loses. I mean. It, and like again, like eight wins is still good, but nine with a potential for ten makes it like one of the best seasons that K State's had. Because if you if they would have won last night and then won the bowl game, K State probably finishes top fifteen, which is yeah, which hasn't happened at K State very often. Yeah, no, that's the that's the truth. So. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll we'll see what happens and where things move forward from here for K State. Uh, we'll we'll await the bowl game opponent and kind of see uh, where everything else goes and and what uh, is up next for them. But man, uh, tough way to end it. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things before we we wrap up uh, on this Sunday. Uh, Marquis Siegel has taken over the team leading tackles this season. Now uh, he leads the team with sixty, so he he gets one pass. Austin Moore. Will Howard did throw his 24th touchdown pass of the season last night. So that means that Will Howard now not only is the, you know, all time touchdown record holder, but he moves himself up into uh, a spot where he is tied with L. Roberson for the most in a single season. And uh, that's, that's a pretty good number for Will Howard because if you go and look at uh, how things end up working out. And I know that there was a lot of people talking about like, oh, well, you know, that's a, the Lifetime Achievement Award he had. It. He threw 39 touchdown passes in the last two seasons. 
It's a pretty good stretch for Will Howard, uh, who will, you know, one game left, but at this moment, finish his career with 48 touchdowns to 25 picks, which is saying a lot considering how much it felt like he turned the ball over the first two years of his career uh, and then throw for over 5,700 yards. So that's uh, that's significant as well. So I don't know, just just a couple of notes there and everything else to, to go down with it. And, uh, uh, you know, Will Howard could have been better last night, but he's not the reason they lost. He played hard. He gave him a chance to win. Uh, and, you know, Ben Sennett, had an awesome game last night uh, and the way things worked out for him, Ben Sennett's, uh, you know, again, bowl game could change things, but he's going to end the season as K-State's leading receiver in terms of yardage. Uh, and he holding the most touchdowns with 16. So uh, just some notes as the regular season comes to an end for K-State. Yeah. Um, to add on, I think the six touchdowns that Senate's had this year is the most for that a, a receiver or a pass catcher, I guess, has had a, a under Curse Kleiman. Oh, well, that is uh that's good to know. Uh that that's that's an element of the the Colin Klein offense taking over where they're these guys are being more heavily involved. Uh and that's that's a good thing for for K State in the long term that there is some some juice to the passing game now. Uh, and and you expect that to continue forward as a guy like Jace Brown, who had a great game last night. Um, that's the other thing I would say. The fact that, you know, of the receivers last night, that the 18-year-old from Florida was able to have the best game for any of the wideouts uh, in six inches of snow, uh, that says a lot about a lot of things in last night's game. But Jace Brown deserves props, and you get really excited about what his future will be, and obviously the connection that he and Avery Johnson will likely have moving forward. Yeah, uh, I mean, Andy was on a Bleacher Report last night in a, the pregame for uh, his one-hander that he had during warm-ups. Oh, so you were talking it up at when you came up last night from warm-ups. I was like, I don't know, it's warm-ups. Like, what, what does that really mean? But uh, you... You were all over it. You were giving uh, lots of praise and love there. So, a Florida kid, it snows in Florida sometimes. I think. Um, you, I, I don't know. I'd have we're to. We're gonna pretend see. like it does because he. I'd have like to see kid. the last time uh, there was significant <laughs> snowfall uh, like that. Um, it, but we're gonna pretend like it snows in Florida because that's why he played well. He was ready. He was ready for it. Yeah, I mean, I I said during the game he must have like a snow machine at home, so he he was used to it and everything. But all right, well, uh, that will do it for us. There's you know I'm sure plenty we could get into. We will be back next Sunday. Me, Drew, fan, and uh, we will be a little bit later. We'll come on once K State knows their bowl destination. Talk a little bit more about that. Probably some more like reflective stuff about the season. DY and I will be here on Monday with a regular Monday show time TBD as uh, I try to figure out life uh, as a, as a stay at home dad that also has a full-time job. So navigating uh, around, you know, naps for a three month old. And if she ever naps, we'll see. So there will be a KSO show on Monday. You just got, you know, kind of be patient on when it's going to come out. Like today, uh, we, we worked around our travel uh, schedule. I, I did not leave Manhattan at my standard 6 a.m. time that I had been during the season when I'd stay overnight uh, to get back to record in the morning. I was like, yeah, I don't think the roads are going to be good enough for that. I didn't leave until like after 11. They were fine for the most part, but Mound Ridge and Heston, boy, that was some, uh, it was still pretty slushy and thick and, and tough to drive through there. So, uh, hopefully everybody made it back from Manhattan safe or you made it to Manhattan safely. And now you get to stay there a while from, uh, your Thanksgiving happenings. And again, we will be back next week. We'll know K-State's bowl opponent location, all that fun stuff. See what happens out of it and, uh, stay locked into everything we got going on at K-State online throughout the rest of this week and everything else, because it is going to be, uh, kind of a big deal to go through and see, uh, what's going on the next couple of weeks because basketball is still in full swing and kicking up and Villanova comes to town in just over a week. That will be a massive game for the Cats, but they have two games before that Oral Roberts on Tuesday night and then North Alabama on Saturday. And if you're wondering, Hey, what, what is this K state online thing all about? I, I follow the YouTube stuff. I follow whatever, but I, I'm not on the, the site. I don't get to see 
all of the information and the analysis that makes K-State fans go crazy in a good way and makes KU fans go crazy in a really bad way. Here is the way that you can get involved right now. Massive opportunity for you. The opportunity for the greatest internet turnaround in history exists here today, and it's not one to be taken lightly. It's the special offer for K-State Online. Get two months for just $1. Use code KSU1 at sign up. You'll be good to go right there. And uh, you'll get a lot of great written pieces, not just from me. You actually get very few from me because I don't <laughs> think anything I write is great. It might be okay at times. Uh, but the good stuff comes from Drew and DY, so you can read up on everything they have. And then, obviously, uh, when you want to be mad at Joe Klanderman, you have a message board at your disposal with the most K-State fans out there. So that's uh, that's my selling point to you. If you're watching this and you say, man, I'm pissed off at Joe Klanderman. I want to give him a piece of my mind. You won't give it directly to him, but you can give it to thousands of other K-State fans that share the same sentiment, and you guys can all bond over this Joe Klanderman guy. Uh, you know, Treat him like you did Dana Dimmel seven years ago. And uh, RIP Dana Dimmel. Yeah, RIP Dana Dimmel. Not dead, but his career might be. Uh, he was, yeah, he and the minors are parting ways. Uh uh, that's another thing. Next week's show, we will hold an in memoriam for uh, coaches connected to the Big 12 or K State in some way. I'm I need to write that down so I don't forget. But I will start making the video right now. So <laughs> bad uh, day to be named Dana. <laughs> yes, bad day to be named Dana. R.I.P. Dana Holgerson, <laughs> also not dead, but uh, yeah, good. Dana, good luck at whatever FCS school you're at next year. I hear North Dakota State might need somebody. I don't know. A pretty bad year for the Bison. Uh, so maybe Dana Holgerson, next Chris Kleiman. Yeah, people, people are, people are saying, yeah. So, man, now I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait to make a little, you know, in memoriam for everything. Uh, we'll do that next week uh, and more and have a fun show with uh, Bull Mania in front of us and, and ready to rock and roll. So for Drew Galloway, I am Mason Voth. This has been the KSO Show. Get on over to On3. Check out all the great K-State Online content to stay up to date with the cats. And we thank you for watching and listening K-State Online.